people with diabetes, whether we're talking about type one diabetes or type two diabetes, a lot of them are, um, you know, they they shun away from eating any kind of food that contains carbohydrates. So they don't eat fruits, they don't eat potatoes, they try and stay away from beans or anything that contains starch. So uh, what can you can you talk about that and give us an idea of whether or not people with diabetes should be avoiding starch in any way, shape, or form? Yes. So, you know, what we, the primary thrust and trajectory of what we do in our practice, it doesn't matter if the patient has diabetes or any other disease is, or complaint. Always try to find the cause of the problem and remove the cause. The cause of diabetes, whether it be type one or type two, is not starch. It doesn't cause diabetes, it never did. The cause of type two diabetes, we now know uh, well, in a 50,000 foot view of the forest, it's animal, it's animal based and sourced foods. And if you want to drill down on a more molecular level, it appears to be saturated fat. Uh, and, it, and it appears that this, which basically pretty much only comes from animals. I mean, there are a couple of rare instances in the plant world where you can get significant levels of saturated fat. But, um, you know, it is basically a result of overindulgence in animal foods. So these saturated fats are toxic. They build up in muscle cells. And we now know that they are toxic to pancreatic islet cells. We have evidence that they actually kill them. And uh, not only do they kill them off, and, and the islet cell is your cell in the pancreas that produces insulin. Insulin is a molecule that is necessary. It's like a, a key that fits into a lock in your cells to allow sugar to enter the cells and, being, and be burned. And you know, if you don't have the capacity to produce these keys anymore, sugar starts building up in your bloodstream and voila, you have diabetes. You know, in the, and that, that's, uh, we used to think that that was the, uh, well, we knew that that was the case for type 1 diabetes, where you've lost your insulin producing or your key producing capacity. And of course, when you don't have these keys to unlock the doors for entry to glucose into these cells, then you have very high blood sugars. Now, for type 2 diabetes, we have um, known for a long time that it's not primarily that uh, mechanism. It, it, it is a mechanism where the locks on the doors of your cell that lets the insulin in don't listen anymore to the keys. You have plenty of uh, keys that are floating around because a type 2 diabetic keeps pouring out more and more insulin as the cells, gateways, or locks become more tone deaf. Uh, so that's a matter of insulin resistance. But we now know that the story is not that cut and dry and that there are many type two diabetics now that have problems where eventually they're, they're going to have difficulty producing insulin because uh, their insulin producing cells are a compromise. And the other, the other situation is, is that the saturated fats also compromise the action of insulin at its targets. So it's a, it's a, we're still figuring all these mechanisms out, but the bottom line is if, if, um, if you want to avoid the causes of, in, of diabetes, they're animal, they're animal saturated fats, type two diabetes. So it's not starch. Um, you know, I think that it, to, to, and you know, there are many different opinions on this, but in general, um, you know, different foods have different glycemic indexes. Uh, they can cause sugars or insulin uh, sugars to rise more rapidly, even in the plant-based world uh, when you ingest them. And in general, starches, the starch group tends to have higher glycemic indexes than other plant groups. So once people are in trouble already, uh, 
eating a lot of starches could be could um, be problematic for them, but I I have never it it is not the cause of the diabetes, and we actually have many patients who enjoy starches uh, in moderate amounts. We have a one patient I can tell you the story who who actually cured himself who was grossly diabetic only eating starch and some plants huge amounts of it. A few years ago, um, it was about maybe about seven years ago, I had a patient walk in who was, he was a, he was a Hispanic male about, ooh, he was very obese, maybe about well over 300 pounds, 320, 330 pounds. And the reason why he was coming into um, our urgent care <laughs> walk-in center this is when I had my old practice. And the reason why he was coming in was because for the past month, he'd been very thirsty, his vision was blurry, and he'd been peeing a lot. So upon hearing this, the first thing the medical assistant does is, you know, check out his urine and do a finger stick on him, to a glucometer reading. Of course, the sugar like, goes off the scale on the, on the urine dipstick, and the sugar is so high when he checks his um, the, ac the glucometer reading, that it just says over 400. It's higher than the machine can measure. So I, don't, I didn't know what was going to happen to this gentleman. He, he never heard of broccoli before. So I, I told him, and it's kind of a crazy thing I'm telling him, right? That your sugars are so high, but you should start eating rice and sweet potatoes. You could have that and you could be better. So who knows? The other thing is that having extremely high sugars, even for a type 2 diabetic, could, if they get high enough, it could be life threatening. So if this person was non compliant, if I, if I gave him, told him, here, do this, this, and this, eat so many greens, have the sweet potatoes, and if he didn't do it, and, you know, because a lot of people don't follow directions, and if I didn't give him the choice of having taken the drugs, he could end up dying. <laughs> he could have ended up going into a situation which is called hyperosmolar co co um, hyperosmolar coma, which is when a type two diabetic sugars get so high, the blood gets so thick with sugar that it the patient loses his consciousness, and you know the people like this have to be admitted to the intensive care unit. So I was crazy enough to basically give this man the choice. And he said, okay, I'll take the plants. I said, okay, I could give you drugs and I know the drugs will knock down your sugars right now. Or I could give you the plants. He says, give me the plants. I said, very good. I said, but you have to follow my directions exactly. I don't want you, if you don't follow these directions to a T, you're gonna be in big trouble. He said, okay, I promise. So I took a pencil and a white piece of paper. I wrote down everything that he should do, which is, it, it basically translates to today what is our, we call it Dr. Weiss's 30 day challenge. It, it is the portal of entry for our year of mindful living. And basically what it consists of is unlimited starches. We, we, pick three, we picked three starches for the gentleman, sweet potatoes. In his case, it was like sweet potatoes, steel cut oats, and, um, brown rice, as much as you want to eat. Whenever you're hungry, help yourself. I didn't care if it's 10 plates a day, help yourself. Uh, but in addition to this, the person has to have 16 ounces daily of uh, le dark leafy greens, preferably raw. Um, things like, uh, you know, uh, kale, collards, mustard greens, stuff like that. Unlimited amounts of fruits with a lot of fructose in them, right? As much as they want and water and that's it so i said goodbye to the gentleman i said we taught him how to use a glucometer because he didn't know what diabetes was and he didn't know what a glucometer machine was we gave him a sample in our office i said here's what you do we made sure he knew how to use it and, and i say you write down your sugars before every breakfast before every lunch before every dinner three times a day and you come back to me here in one week 
And I said, if something goes wrong and you start feeling, if your condition declines, you call 911 and go to the emergency room. So the next day, I come into the office and on my desk, there's a note that LabCorp wants to speak to me because there's a panic value. There's an extreme value and my heart sinks because I guess I know who this is. The lab was calling me up directly. They didn't want to wait to send the paper report to me. The pathologist was calling me to tell me that this gentleman's sugar was 760, which is a, which is a danger kind of sugar. It's, these are the kind of people who go into hyperosmolar, non-ketotic coma, who must be admitted to the hospital. And I started to turn white. I guess whiter than I am. Well, I'm kind of yellowish because I eat a lot of carotid oils. But I feverishly, I, I enlisted all of my office staff to get this guy, contact him. And basically, we kept calling. His cell phone didn't work. We kept calling his home phone number. There was no answer. Sent the police to his, I figured he's lying dead on the floor of his apartment or like delirious and, and non-responsive. Sent the West New York police to his apartment because we had his address. They're knocking the door, no one, they can't find him, they give up. We call him, you know, a couple of more times over the past few days, can't find him. Seven days later, he walks into the office. And I said, what happened to you? He said, oh, I didn't know you were trying to call me. My phone had trouble. I said, how do you feel? He said, I've never felt better in my life. I feel fantastic. I said, we put him on the scale. We, he, he had a high blood pressure, blood pressure normal. Uh, in seven days, he lost 12 pounds, okay? I, I said, let me, did, were you taking your sugars? I said, let me see your sugars. And the sugars told this story. And by the way, I said, what were you eating? I said, it, I ate a lot of sweet potatoes. I ate three sweet potatoes a day. He said, I ate two bowls of oatmeal every day. I said, did you eat the greens? He said, yes, I ate the greens, but I ate all those starches as well. His sugars, the trajectory of his sugars read something like this. 24 hours later, he started to get readings in the high 300s because the glucometers can't really accurately measure below, above 400. So high 300s, and then uh, 48 hours later, it went into the high 200s. 72 hours later, it went into the high 100s. Four days later, it went into the mid 100s. Five days, six days. By the sixth or seventh day, his sugar was 100. And, which is basically normal. On no drugs, lost 12 pounds in a week. That's what a plant-based diet does for diabetes.